Hello, I'm Ben Kaplan, the editor of Iron Magazine, and it's exciting uh, to wish you off well in your race. We have with us this morning, Justin Knight. Justin Knight is a Canadian runner and an esteemed world-renowned athlete. Uh, Justin, before I go on and on about you, why don't you talk to the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon participants and just give them a, a quick bio of uh, your claim to fame. All right. Well, thank you. First and foremost, thank you for having me. It's a, a true honor, you know, and I'll, I'll do anything to represent Canada and Toronto specifically as best as I can. And I was so thankful to hear that you guys reached out for me to, you know, speak to you guys. And I just want to say congratulations to all of the participants for you guys to do this marathon on your own, on your own time. Like you might not know it, but that speaks to your character. It speaks to your work ethic. A lot of times it's hard to do things by yourself without other people watching, but for all of you out there participating, you know, a round of applause for you guys, because, you know, I've had to deal with practicing myself and running long distances by myself and it's not easy and it gets fun, you know, as you get used to it. But um, first of all, I mean, I'm Justin Knight. For those who don't know me, um, I'm a professional track and field runner for the Reebok Boston Track Club. Um, formerly, I ran uh, in the NCAA. I'm a, I think I'm a two-time individual NCAA champion and a one-time team champion in cross country. Uh, Multiple-time All-American. I, I actually don't know how many All-Americans I, I got, but I, I That's have a lot. That's have a lot of All-Americans. When you've gotten so many All-Americans <laughs> that you can't remember how many you've got, let's just say it's a, it's a boatload. <laughs> it's embarrassing, you know? I, I feel like my agent's going to tell me, like, Justin, you should probably know the answer for that. So <laughs> next time I'll tell you guys how much I have. But, um, you know, those are just the small accolades that I have. And, you know, growing up in Toronto, uh, you know, I went to school in Toronto. I went through the whole Metro's OPSA process. And just to kind of, you know, take my community and kind of represent them while I'm overseas or in America is just really special. And to wear Team Canada proudly, it's something that, um, you know, I, I don't take for granted. So when I'm out there racing for all you guys, um, I'm not doing it on just behalf of myself and my family, but to represent, you know, this great nation of Canada together. So thank you guys for making me want to represent you guys. <laughs> I hope everybody watching is getting the same sensation I'm getting there. Like, boy, he's a really nice guy. Like this guy's a, a mensch. <laughs> hey, I'm Canadian. I have to be nice, right? <laughs> so just... These guys are about to take off. Hopefully they're catching this, you know, before their event. And it's a fun run for most. I mean, you can't qualify for the Boston Marathon on a virtual event and it doesn't have official timing, but I know myself and, you know, folks I run with, like I have been running through COVID and mm -hmm. uh, it might not be my personal best, but every time I get out there, I do want to do my thing. I mean, I, the goal is to run fast. And even anybody in 5K or anybody, you bought the ticket, you know, you paid for the bib. So when we do this thing, let's, let's do it. Let's do yes. it. And we're not going yes. to stop this, but we may as well put together a performance. Exactly. So, you know, for you, and let's say folks are getting this the day before or a couple of days before or the night before or whatever, what do you do? before a big event when you know you want to do something that next day? What should guys be doing right now, guys and girls? Yeah, for sure. I mean, as a, as a runner, when we're preparing for a big race, as you guys know, you've been training for this this whole time. This is the moment you've been waiting for to kind of just prove to yourself, to prove to your family or friends or coaches or, you know, whoever, or just prove to yourself, like, you know, I put in all this work and it's time to show how far I've come. So you know, with, with that being said in mind, like it's very hard to kind of, you know, overhype yourself or be focused on the race or be overly concentrated. And um, I do not think that that's a good thing. I think personally, you have to set aside the race. You know, you can be very excited to run it, but you don't want to be nervous or overthinking things way far in advance. So for a person like myself, uh, I watch so much Netflix, you would think I'm employed by them. <laughs> that... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I always tend to find like a good series or, you know, when all else fails, The Office is one of my favorite shows of all time. And, you know, I really, I'm a big fan of enjoying movies. Um, sometimes if I have enough space in my suitcase, if I'm traveling, 
um, I'll bring my PS4 or like my Nintendo or something like that and play games with my roommate or whoever's at the race with me or playing by myself. And even too, my mom's going to want to hear this. I do a lot of reading now. <laughs> I've graduated, you know, I'm, I'm done with college, but it doesn't mean that that's where uh, enriching your brain ends. I, I like to read about stuff that I'm interested in. So, you know, for the race, I, I think it's very important to kind of distract yourself from the moment. And then, you know, that day of, you know, you can get yourself pumped up and get really energized to go out there and do your best. How do you know? I mean, your thing, when you've got so much pressure on the line and, you know, one shot at doing it. See, I think this will even relate to my people is mm -hmm. that you have to, and I, you know, I've got young kids and I'm always telling them when we run to pace themselves. And that's very difficult, yeah. you know, it's very, you know, for a kid, but I'm sure even, you know, for me, for you, I mean. Trust me, I know. Yeah. My freshman year, I have a story. I'll share it with you another time, but I know all about the keeping a good pace, even though your body's telling you, go, go, go. But <laughs> Tell me the story. Tell the people the story. What's the story? Well, the story is, you know, being in a, a Canadian athlete, I am relatively new to the sport at the time. Uh, I started running in. Um, seriously in grade 11 I technically started at the end of grade 10 but started running seriously in grade 11 and my freshman year in college I didn't know any of you know my peers I didn't know any of these American kids that were well-renowned in the NCAA or just coming out of high school and to me you know I hope I don't offend anybody by saying this but it applies to myself too like I'm not the scariest looking person. Like nobody sees me and says, man, uh -oh. that person looks, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody's like really visualizing that. Like we're not very, um, you know, as runners, like you can't really tell who's going to be great and who's not. I think all body types vary. Yeah. And um, heading into these races, I remember my first collegiate race. Uh, I didn't really know a lot of people's names. I knew one guy, Edward Cesarek. I don't know if a lot of people know him, but he was the man. Okay. Back when I was in school. And I remember going and I was saying, well, telling my teammates, um, like, this is how it's going to go. Everybody's going to expect this guy to win, but I'm just going to go to the front and outrun him. And he's not going to be able to keep up pace with me. And, yeah. you know, that's like the type of stuff I was used to in college or sorry, in high school. But lo and behold, I tried that. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, did they have a field day with me. And the worst part is, is like the way the course ended was like with 1K to go, I think like, or I think 1.5K to go, 800 meters was straight uphill. Wait. So that's where I kind of broke down and like people were just passing me and passing me and passing me. And um, I remember crossing the line and like, I didn't understand because I knew one guy, the Edward Chesser guy, I knew he was great, but I didn't know who everybody else that beat me was and I, I'm not gonna lie I cried yeah. My coach. <laughs> and yeah and he told me he's like you know Justin you're at a level now where it's not just you like there's a lot of guys that can do what you can do but the difference is going to be what you do when nobody's watching how you train and you just came into the NCAA so I didn't expect you to win your first race off the bat or know how to even race but as you get older and as you progress like you gotta know like hey don't have to go to the front of the pack like let somebody else do the work stay on his back and like he'll take you through the pace and then eventually like you can out kick him when the time is right and that was my one story my introduction to the ncaa and it got better after that <laughs> there is nothing more painful i uh, i remember this this has happened to me uh, i don't know how many marathons i've run i'm like you but instead of the all-american honor <laughs> yeah. but like there's no so feeling crazy. on earth more painful than realizing that you've done too much too soon and <laughs> far to go. Yeah. And just, I always got that notion like around the bay, this big race in Hamilton, thinking like, cause it'd be cars coming on the side. And yeah. I'd have to think, like, I wish one of those cars would just veer into me real quick. And just, <laughs> like, end, end this, man, end this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, not yeah. exactly, but I mean, just that notion as a point. As Why don't you yeah. explain, what's a, do you aim to run? Why don't you explain what a negative split is and see yeah. if that's something that might make sense for folks uh, this weekend? For sure. Yeah, and a, a negative split is basically when you go out 
in a more reserved pace than you would. Doesn't mean it's slow. It just means that you could probably do it again multiple yeah. times. And um, basically, once you get to whether it's a halfway point or 10 kilometers left, it, it depends on what the race is because, you know, 800 meters, you negative split the 400 meters, right? But um, basically, when you make your negative split, it means you're going faster than the way you've been going in the way that you started and you finish strong. So I think personally, I always reckon I'm, a, I'm probably the, I wouldn't say the negative split king, but I love negative splitting because you're not giving too much of yourself and you know that you have more in the tank. And I think the way of doing this properly is you have to really know what your body can handle. And sometimes especially in an event like a marathon and I'm not the expert on marathons first and foremost, because I've never won, ran one. Yeah. But in the long distance races that I have run being 10 K and et cetera in cross country and stuff is that you have to, even when you start those first couple of K's, it's not going to feel hard and you're going to think, Oh, I should go faster. I should go faster. But you have to remember how much of the race is left and think like, will I be able to do this for X, X amount of kilometers or miles and stuff? So when you try to negative split, what I'm, the way to do it properly is, you know, take it out conservative, but not jogging. Like you want to go out at a good pace, but a comfortable pace. Right. And then yeah. when, when, you, when you get to that point where it's time to go, like that's where you leave it all on the line and just charge straight through the finish line. I don't know if that was a good enough explanation, but that's it's the good. way I see it. I mean, the idea is, yeah, I mean, the idea is just – just cool your jets, take it easy, mm -hmm. especially we're out there doing it on a virtual thing. So the, the streets yeah. might not be closed. I mean, there's going to be variables. You know, the idea is if you can hang in, I mean, if everybody has a goal, I mean, we can even take a step back that like I say, the first step is if you're running one of these events, get an idea in your head at what time you might want to finish at. Exactly. And then you could take that time divide it by two. So, you know, halfway point, you should be at yeah. X time. Keep yourself to X time to that first half. Mm -hmm. and see how you feel for the second half and give yourself a chance to, to exactly. Yeah. And that's what it, and we think the exact same way. Cause you know, I think back to whenever I mentor the younger kids, like whether they just got to university or whether like they're just coming out of high school to go to university and these kids that talk to me, <clears throat> and one of the things that always comes up is goal setting. Yeah. And right. the way that I see goal setting is that, you know, you kind of have to play a mental trick with yourself and there's what's realistic for you to accomplish and there's unrealistic goals. Right. And I'm a firm believer of setting unrealistic goals for yourself. Sure. Because you know how it is when you race and everybody watching knows how it is it is never perfect. Sometimes it's raining. Sometimes yeah. it's yeah. windy. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, maybe you shouldn't have ate that McDonald's burger. Hopefully <laughs> don't McDonald's, but uh, actually McDonald's isn't bad, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Maybe yeah, not yeah. Oh, you couldn't eat the night before, whatever it is. Yeah. Maybe everybody's eating healthy, but maybe you just had something unhealthy and it's bugging you in your stomach. But lo and behold, you will never find yourself in a perfect racing environment. Right. Good. And yeah. That being said, when you set an unrealistic goal for yourself, it gives you room for error because if your goal is up here, but what's realistic for you to accomplish is down here, you know, maybe the weather's bad and it's raining. <laughs> and then maybe you start getting a cramp and all of a sudden you might achieve what's more, what's greater. Sorry. You might achieve something that's a little bit further than your realistic goal but you never would have got there if you were just training for, you know, that realistic goal to begin with. I think I made it really confusing towards that. <laughs> well, it's interesting. And I, I think the thing that you are so great, and maybe I'm going to try and see what my technical prowess is, if we can get some clips of you running so people can really see what I'm <laughs> talking about. It's like, this nice yeah. guy, it's like my neighbor. What does this guy know? <laughs> Hopefully I can get some clips of you so people can see. Oh, I'm a killer track sometimes <laughs> <laughs> he's a killer on, you hear that everybody he's a killer on the track sometimes <laughs> so maybe you can break it down now let's talk a little bit about mechanics okay so you're, yes. a, you're a killer on the track so let's just say i get out there and i make it happen uh and i've done my pacing and whatever 
and you hit a point and you can actually see that finish line. So this is just that dream scenario where you've done your mm. due diligence, you've kept yourself yep. straight, you're out there, you see that thing. Give me the Justin Knight mechanics on when you go for broke. What is what are you doing with your feet, your body, your arms, your legs? Like show me what tell us what to do. Well, for sure. I mean, when I start a race, if you ever watch me, I, sorry, I'm, I know my body's not necessarily in the camera, but usually I just keep my arms like same level and I don't do too much swinging because personally, that's not the way I run and everybody's form is different and I can't stress that. Yeah. But everybody has their own pace and what they're comfortable with. But when it gets to that moment where you see the finish line, like you said, and you're gunning for this thing. That is when you got to use your arms to propel you forward. And, you know, I used to actually train athletes. Um, they're not uh, runners, but they were, funny enough, they were hockey players. And we used to do drills. And a lot of them, when I told them to like, hey, they know, just chill when we're doing tempo stuff, but when we're doing sprints, like you got to start using your arms to propel you forward. And they told me like it made it so much easier because yeah, great. instead of using your arms at the beginning, Shape. and like your arms end up getting tired it's like an extra gear that you kind of develop for yourself nice dude. and um in terms of legs me personally the way my running form is is that i try to go for perfect form like kind of really extend my legs see how far do that again next. do that again <laughs> does it look good like this yeah man that's crazy okay yeah. cool i know I, I can't do a video of my feet right now because my ipad yeah. can't but more or less that's kind of how i run and um okay. oh you can't do it <laughs> no that's the thing. that's pretty elegant okay thanks maybe i should do some more videos like that but um a hand model i try to see um how far i can extend my legs but at the same time as soon as i touch as soon as i touch the ground it's almost like the, the ground's on fire like as soon as you touch the ground you got to focus on propelling yourself forward so just really quick steps and stuff like that when i see the finish line in Personally, that's what works for me. And, you know, everybody's body's different. But if you could try your best to do stuff like that or find something that makes you feel like you have an extra gear and incorporate that into your final finish, it will work. Are you conscious of your stride? I mean, do you recommend, I mean, I guess this close to race day, I guess we don't yeah. really need folks to think about it, but it seems like by your finger motions that you land on your toes then? Um, I think it's funny enough that you say that because a, a lot of times, sometimes in pictures, you might catch me heel strike, but yeah. sometimes you'll catch me landing on my toes. And I personally, I, I don't really watch my videos like too in depth after I run the races. And, um, I haven't worked with anybody that kind of analyzes my form like that. <clears throat> but what I have noticed is that, um, it's not a matter of laziness, but my form does change from when I'm going out for an easy jog, like when the race first starts, sure. rather than when I negative split. And I think when I'm jogging at first, my form might tend to heel stripe because like I'm not trying as hard, but then when I do open up my stride like this, like, yes, you will see me on my toes running. I know it's probably not, I don't know why it happens, but just naturally my body does things and it, and it doesn't hurt me, you know? And yeah. I think, I think like that being said too, is like, I think everybody has to know that everybody has different bodies. Everybody's body runs a different way and there's certain things that you can change and there's certain things that might not necessarily hurt you. So. This is cool, man. This is all great stuff. <laughs> I appreciate it. What do you, oh, do? Thanks. <laughs> do you have any sort of like, you know, there's always these parts in the event where like, okay, we're excited. Maybe we didn't sleep the night before, whatever it is. Then we yeah. get there, we get to the thing, we show up, you know, it's sort of happening. Okay, hey Ma, look, I'm doing it. You know, you're out <laughs> of the it's gonna happen. Then you get a part that like, okay, this is no longer like fun. Like now you're doing the work. So the hype is over, you're out there. Now you're kind of working. What do you do at that point? Point. I guess this is like a psychological question as much yeah. as like a, a oh yeah I, can, and I have a story for that too actually bring it do on you, do you want me to share another story by all means okay hopefully for the people watching like my stories are okay I don't <laughs> but um my first NCAA championship uh individual win actually it was for cross country um, my senior year and I was the favorite to win whatever and the start of the race, everything was going perfect. Very talented group. And I, I wasn't leading. Like, the 
NAU boys were going trying to take the pace out of me. And eventually, I think 5K in out of a 10K race, I started cramping up. And this might not be the case for everyone. Usually there's a point where your body's just like, whoa, this is starting to get hard. But sure. in this case, I also had the cramp on top of that. And I remember there was a certain point, I think I, it was, um, I was at 8K, so I had 2K to go. And these guys were not playing around, man. They were teammates, and yeah. they didn't know who was going to win, but they said, one of us is going to win. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> you can't let Justin Knight win. You know, he's not on our team. He's not, he doesn't run for Northern Arizona. Like, let's do this together. And it was just us three, actually. In the, well, there's a race of other people, but in our pack, like the right. top three people, yeah. there was a pretty big gap between us three and the rest of the pack. Okay. So it was a race of three. And they're working together. And, and you're cramped. With see, yeah. yeah, and seeing these guys work together as teammates in like, I was very worried because I was like, hey, like, I'm not feeling great. You know, this is hard. They're running good. Like, they're teammates. I know they're working against me. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I remember just having a thought. Obviously, I mean, my parents were there. My coaches were on the side. Some people were cheering for me. So that stuff helped. But then in my head, I had to have, like, you know, a moment for myself that, okay, Justin, you only have two kilometers left. Two kilometers. And right. for those that are running a marathon, that's like going outside, picking up your mail from the mailbox <laughs> and coming back inside. Right. That's, right? That's just... It's nothing. Yeah. And I thought to myself, like, I'm only going to be hurting for, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I'm really bad at, like, you know, the actual pace or how much. Let's say I have a mile left, just to make it simple. I'm only going to be hurting for, like, maybe five minutes. Five more minutes. Five more minutes of my this life. This guy runs a five-minute mile. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> On the track, I run a lot faster. But yeah. for cross-country sake, yeah. I'll, I'll put the barrier at five minutes. I, don't, I okay. honestly don't know about pacing because sometimes I'm not even paying attention to that. Usually, I just focus on, like, you know, try to run the guys. Race. Yeah. Yeah. But let's just say for argument's sake, I only have five more minutes of hell left where I'm hurting, my stomach hurts, these guys are making me tired. And I thought to myself, like, as soon as you cross that line, you are going to feel better. Like, you will have your time to sit down, to relax, to get that, you know, Gatorade, Powerade, whatever it might be. And you're not going to have to run. Like, you're going to be like, wow, yeah. I did that. Yeah. And for me, like, that, that gave me enough strength to kind of ignore the fact that I was cramping up and ignore the fact that I was hurting because I was just like, five more minutes of my life. Right. That's a YouTube video, right? <laughs> right. So... <laughs> I yeah. think like, I mean, it might not work for everyone, but sometimes you got to put in perspective when you've made it that far or however it might be, just think to yourself, like when you cross the line, you know, it'll be done. It'll be over. And like, you won't have to worry about it. And it's just a small part of your life that you're going to be hurting for and try your best to work through it. That's my only thing. My buddy's always like when we're, when we're out going, it's like, oh, 5k left. We've done 5k before, right? You know, yeah, yeah. Know, <laughs> I'm just like, oh yeah, we've done that, you know, and you keep and yeah. you know, moving forward. Hey man, all this stuff has been absolutely terrific. I appreciate your time. I so hope much. I'm helping. <laughs> helpful. I think so, man. I think it's great. Let us yeah. know how do we root you on? Where can we find you? What's next with you in these crazy times? Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess like with, COVID and everything with so much uncertainty. I, I wish I could tell you exactly which race I'm going to be running at, but um, you know, I, I don't think I have anything scheduled in the fall um, unless I do a road race here or there. But as of right now, I, I don't see myself running in the fall, but um, I could see myself running indoors, indoor track and field starting in like maybe February or so. And then after that, you know, it's getting ready for the Olympics, getting ready for, the outdoor season, chasing records and stuff like that. So um, if people want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter. It's J-U-S-T-Y-N dot night, K-N-I-G-H-T. Or if you just put in my regular name. It, I, I feel like there's not a lot of Justin Knights out there with a Y, so <laughs> I should be able to be found. But, um, you know, moving forward, everything we're just looking at towards the Olympics and every single race that I do will – be done to prepare me for being the best person I can be at the Olympics in Tokyo, hopefully when it, when it goes off. 
give me a sense, man, what are you doing to keep yourself on track? I mean, I know we spoke a little earlier before the thing started recording and you were just talking about how nice it is to be home and how good it is to be home. <laughs> but minus your usual, I mean, how structured you are. I mean, an Olympic athlete, how everything's yeah. got to be just like eyes on the prize and every morsel mm. of food and every step exactly. on track. How are you keeping yourself? Are you in good shape currently? Yeah, I mean, I, w I would like to, I'm not in horrible shape. <laughs> like, right. I, I wouldn't be, if I wanted to run with you and go for, you know, maybe an hour run, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be panting. <laughs> I could say that. Right. But um, I, I'm in good shape. Like, not very uh, good and slow, though, I, so it's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, exactly. But, uh, but I recently, you know, I came back to Canada, thankfully, um, around, I, I think, like, around August 15th or so somewhere around there and um at that point in my life like I was taking a break from running I actually took three weeks off from running completely and um me personally I find that you know I don't like doing absolutely nothing on break like I don't like I, I won't run but maybe I do push-ups maybe I do sit-ups maybe I do like something to work on me so that my body when I start running is it, it's not like that much of a shocker sure and um it's funny actually because I on Twitter one of my friends just made fun of me for something. He said like, "Oh, buddy, you only work for like sixty minutes a day because you're a professional runner." Yeah. But then I, I was joking with them that like you know, I actually work twenty four seven because everything that I do, right, even even on break revolves around running. You know, I go to bed at ten o'clock. Um, I wake up at maybe seven or six fifty or six thirty sometimes. Uh, everything that I eat, you know, like everything kind of revolves around running. And um, I think I, I really like that, you know, and even all my breaks and stuff to make sure that, you know, it's not that hard for me to get back into running. I, I do little things like, you know, eating proper meals. I try not to eat too unhealthy. Like I have a good time, but, you know, I'm not trying to yeah. see if I can guzzle like eight boxes of pizza just to say I have like a record of some sort in my house, you know? So, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just a little stuff like that that, that kind of helps me keep in shape. And fortunately enough, you know, I come from a great supportive family. You know, my mom, my dad, my brother, you know, they love me. I love them. And even my brother, he's been biking with me on every single run. Um, cool. He has a bike. And my dad actually came out with me to the trails. Uh, I found a single track trail actually um, in the Vaughn area. And he came out and he was biking with me as I ran. And they know, like, you know, to be honest, from when this COVID thing started around March to August, I was practicing by myself in yeah. Virginia. I had teammates that I, I, you know, I could have ran with, but me personally, like, there's so much uncertainty with how serious and how you can contract the virus that I was just like, listen, I'm just going to do my practice by myself. And as you know, being a, a runner that's usually sits and kicks, like I'm used to having people to help me through these workouts. Yeah. So um, they knew that I was training by myself for like five or six months. And then when I come back here, they're like, you know, I'll come and bike ride with you. I'll keep you some company. So I'm very fortunate for them to be like huge supporters in that sense for me. So hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> right on, man. It does. It is. Hey. We sincerely, I mean, this is one of the greatest runners to come out of Canada. We appreciate wow, the time. Yeah, man, it's the, the best is yet to come, despite all the yeah. accolades. Hey, I'm Ben Kaplan. It's the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon, the virtual expo. Everybody's excited. Justin Knight, find him <laughs> on the internet. I will go back and forth. If anyone's got some serious questions for Justin or whatever, you can email me. We can get in touch with Justin. We're all rooting for sure. out there running. And hopefully, you know what? And, you know, we might have to speak this into existence as long as my schedule works with it. But I'd love to come out and, and be a fan for once. You know what I mean? Oftentimes, I'm, I'm at these events in, like, even the Olympics, World Championships, whatever. And, you know, I'm there for a purpose. I'm there to race. But it, it'd be nice to kind of even get out and, like, cheer on my fellow Canadians and my fr fellow Torontonians, whatever, and cheer them on in their race. And that, that'd be really cool. Like maybe, you know, when all this COVID stuff is over and all right. everything's back to normal, we, we have to check in on each other. And I'd love to come down and cheer, cheer some people on. We'll hold you to that, man. All right, thanks for your time. Godspeed, <laughs> Godspeed man. Thank you.